Good afternoon everyone. I'm here with Andy from Kent Survival. Howdy. And he's had a bit of a change of look. Go and show us. <laughs> the hair's gone, the beard's been trimmed. Quite a shock this morning when I picked him up. Yeah, we're in Pluckley today in Kent. We're doing a little four mile walk from the 50 Walks in Kent book. We're just doing a little walk today around Pluckley, little chart. Um, we've got some stuff to tell you about the apples here. And of course, Pluckley is famous for the Darling Buds of May, the TV series, if you remember it. David Jason, all that stuff. I think a very young Catherine Zeta-Jones as well, yeah, possibly. Yeah, she was. Possibly. So, got a little bit to tell you about that as well, while we're walking. Yeah, should be a good one this. The weather's rather nice. Anyways, enough talking. Let's get walking. be few such memorable fictional families as the gutsy lusty Larkins, irrepressible Pop, voluptuous Ma, beautiful Mariette and the gaggle of young noisy children. This walk takes you through the heart of the Darling Buds of May country, for not only was the television series filmed at Pluckley, but the creator of the Larkins, H.E. Bates, lived at Little Chart. Herbert Ernest Bates was born in 1905 in Northamptonshire and moved to Little Chart in 1931 where he lived until he died in 1974. Bates worked as a journalist before publishing his first book and quickly established a reputation for his stories about country life in England. During World War II he served as a squadron leader in the RAF and he continued to write and his stories appeared under the pseudonym Flying Officer X. He was astonishingly prolific and one of his most famous books, Fair Stood the Wind for France in 1944, was written while he was on leave. Other books, like The Purple Plain in 1947, drew on his experiences in Burma during World War II. Bates wrote short stories, novels, plays and pieces on gardening and country life. His love of nature always shines through, and in the Larkin books he brilliantly captures the beauty of the countryside around Pluckley. There are copses full of bluebells, nightingales in the woods, fields choked with strawberries and trees laden with cherries, cobnuts, pears and plums. Bates also writes of miles of pink apple orchards, showing petals like light confetti, and this walk takes you through some orchards. In spring you'll be able to enjoy the blossom, while in autumn you'll see the apples, which, as elsewhere in Kent, often seem to be left to rot on the ground. Apple growing goes back to Roman times, and the first large-scale orchards were planted for Henry VIII. Apples were highly prized, and even in Victorian times, ordinary people 
could only afford to buy windfalls and bruised fruit. There are more than 6,000 different varieties of apple and hundreds of types of pears, plums and cherries. Sadly, vast areas of orchard have now disappeared from Kent due to competition from imported fruit. However, people are becoming more interested in eating local produce, so hopefully some Kentish apples will survive. We're heading back to Pluckley now and heading through the apple orchards again. I'm in my element here. You know what apples make? Magic apple juice. Do love a cider. This is banging. <laughs> All the apples you could want. Orchards are not the wildlife havens that they used to be as they are sprayed with insecticide and tend to be densely planted. Still it's worth keeping a lookout to see if you can see any orchard butterflies such as the small tortoise shell and red admiral which feed off rotten fruit. Pluckley claims to be the most haunted village in England boasting about a dozen ghosts. They range in form from a highwayman, a monk and a gypsy watercress seller to a red lady who wanders through the churchyard and even a marching band. On top of that there's the furniture in a local inn which has a habit of moving around by itself. Well welcome back, we have made it back to Pluckley. Uh, we're here at the recreation ground, the car's just over there. Um, I'm going to sit and have a little ration pack, something to eat in a minute. Yeah, thank you for watching and uh, cheers for Andy, join us on this little walk. Cheers guys, see you again soon, bye. Well, so we finished the walk and a little bit peckish so I brought along with me this single meal ration pack from the British Army. It's menu number two. I believe this one's a chickpea curry. So I picked this up for about £10 on eBay and it's as I say like a sort of a single meal sides and drinks not like the 24 hour ones. So let's get into it straight away. We've got our main, the chickpea curry, the flame smashing heater, that's going to be heating the main meal up. So I'm beyond the beaten track, just nuts. And those little fruit smoothies. This one I believe is apple, strawberry and banana. Sounds quite nice. Got a cranberry cereal bar. There's usually two of these lemon drink powders, but I had one the other day when I was on a day walk with candy. So it's uh, another Beyond the Beaten Track one. Fruit flavoured energy drink powder, lemon. So 25 gram oatmeal block. So it's just sort of like an oatmeal biscuit really. Finally, the accessory pack. Inside that we have the really sturdy British Army spoon or spork, pack of tissues, the huge wet wipe, a little pack of spearmint V6 gum. We've got three in one coffee and a three in one tea. It comes in that big plastic bag for your rubbish. Anyways, enough yakking, let's get snacking. Let's get our chickpea curry in our FRH. Seal it up, give it a little shake. Sounds like it's starting to heat up already. Make up our drink mix. tasty, it's refreshing. It tastes like it's got a little bit of lime in it, even though it hasn't, it says it's lemon, but probably with a bit more lime or a lime flavour to it, would be even, even tastier I reckon, but yeah, no, that's a winner. Let's try out the cranberry cereal bar next. So it's quite sticky. That's really nice that. Perfect texture to it. You can taste the sugar in it though. <laughs> <coughs> Just cracked open the uh, the nuts and 
basically says it on the packet just nuts that's pretty much all they are just uh, peanuts cashews almonds not roasted or salted very plain good to snack on but they could do with something like some dried fruit I'd say to mix with them next thing is the oatmeal block which I accidentally broke in half trying to open it there we go very slightly sweet smell to it just a slightly sweetened biscuit really um, I feel like you could do maybe with a few of them rather than just the one um, I suppose it would go well with the three in one tea that I've just made oh perfect combination yep that's a winner all day and then I think this is the final snack we've got other than the chewing gum I'm just waiting for the chickpea curry just to heat up a little bit more so final snack is this fruitage and uh, yeah that's apple, strawberry and banana puree pretty tasty they all kind of taste the same really despite what flavour they say I really like them, they're good nice consistency give you a bit of energy and say we've been on like a four mile walk so and I haven't eaten a lot today so this will fill me up nicely okay, okay well it smells pretty good let's have a little taste I'm not a, uh, a massive curry fan myself or a chickpea fan myself but these two together work pretty well I've had something like this before in a 24 hour British Rat Pack so this is like one of their vegetarian options I could happily eat this. I've just finished the tea, three in one, and yeah, nothing overly special about it, but it wasn't horrible, so that was good. Three in one coffee, it's not that bad. The last time I had one of these, it was horrible, but this one's all right. I think all that leaves is the wet wipe and the chewing gum. Let's have the chewing gum now. Let's trek out that huge wet wipe. It's like a like a bath towel size <laughs> wet wipe. Mm. See, anyway, that was a little look at this uh, UK wrap pack. Just a, a single meal one. Menu number two: chickpea curry. That's the end of the video and the walk. Cheers for watching. See you again soon. Bye. Right, we've arrived at the Swan Hin. Fuck. Swan Hin. Please fall off, please fall off. Go on Andy, go on. One more. There's some good reps there boy.